Selamat sore semuanya. Terima kasih sudah hadir di acara sore hari ini. Uh, perkenalkan nama saya Evi. Saya di sini dengan rekan dari Ailing uh, di Jakarta Barat. Ada Mas Aditya Mada, Dito, dan ada juga Halo. Mas uh, Zaki. Oke. Okay. Uh, sore ini kita akan uh, adakan uh, virtual session uh, bersama dengan Monash um, University Malaysia dengan Faculty uh, of Science. Di sini akan bergabung dengan kita uh, Miss Christine. Selamat sore Miss Christine. Good afternoon. And then kita juga ada Dr. Lee. Dr. Sorry, Dr. Lee. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us Good here. Thanks for the invitation. Okay, so uh, we are going to start the session uh, with Christine, and then after that uh, we are going to continue the session with Dr. Lee. Okay, so Christine, it's your time now. Okay. Okay. Let me share my screen first. Oke, okay. okay. um, selamat sore semuanya uh, dengan, oke okay, sebentar, oke okay, uh, semua sudah bisa lihat screen aku ya. Nah ini aku akan uh, kasih presentation singkat mengenai Monash University dulu sebelum nanti Um, kalian dengar presentasi uh, dari uh, Dr. Yi. Oke, okay. okay. uh, kita dari uh, Monash University yang di Malaysia nih. Nah, sekarang aku akan jelasin kenapa sih uh, kalian harus pilih untuk uh, melanjutkan studinya nanti di Malaysia. Oke. Okay. Uh, Oke. Okay. Nah, ini lima alasan uh, kenapa kalian harus uh, milih untuk uh, studi lanjutan kalian nanti di Malaysia. Yang pertama itu quality education at affordable tuition fee. Nah, seperti uh, kalian tahu, kursnya untuk Uh, Malaysia ringgit itu kan tidak terlalu tinggi dibandingkan dengan negara-negara lain. Jadi kalau secara uang kuliah itu akan sangat terjangkau jika dikalikan dengan konversi uh, ringgit itu dibandingkan negara-negara uh, studi yang lebih jauh, misalnya seperti Australia atau ke Inggris atau ke Amerika. Nah ini uh, bisa jadi uh, bahkan untuk Singapura pun itu masih tetap lebih yang dekat dan terjangkau itu masih Malaysia. Yang kedua itu alasan kedua, affordable cost of living. Mungkin kalau kalian di sini um, untuk makan sehari-hari, untuk um, jajan gitu ya, mungkin di sekolah atau di kampus, nah itu kan mungkin uh, kisarannya tuh antara uh, 20.000 sampai uh, 25.000, nah itu nggak akan terlalu jauh berbeda dengan uh, Malaysia sendiri. Jadi untuk Uh, makan sekali itu di Malaysia tuh kurang lebih sekitar 5 sampai enam ringgit jadi itu tidak akan uh, berbeda terlalu jauh gitu. Nah kalau uh, alasan ketiga ini shorter duration without compromising education quality. Jadi di mana durasi kuliahnya sendiri nih uh, untuk program-program uh, di Monash University itu standarnya tiga tahun untuk uh, Uh, mostly untuk programnya untuk S1 dan untuk S2-nya antara satu satu setengah tahun sampai dua tahun. Nah, untuk uh, secara durasi ini pendek, jadi kalau dibandingkan dengan kuliah di Indonesia nih, misalnya kuliah di Indonesia kan itu kalian empat um, tahun. Jadi begitu kalian selesai tiga tahun, kalian sudah mulai kerja, teman-teman kalian baru masuk ke tahun terakhir kuliah gitu. Jadi secara durasi juga uh, lebih cepat. Dan untuk Malaysia sendiri itu kan multicultural environment ya, jadi untuk uh, warganya sendiri itu terdiri dari uh, tiga uh, ras, jadi ada untuk Melayu, ada Chinese, ada juga untuk India. Jadi uh, dan juga uh, banyak negara-negara uh, lain tuh yang uh, penduduknya juga tinggal pindah ke Malaysia. Jadi blendednya tuh sangat uh, banyak untuk culturalnya sendiri. Dan juga benefitnya nih kalau misalnya um, multicultural seperti ini. 
nih ya pasti banyak juga pilihan makanan yang kalian bisa coba gitu. Nah yang terakhir ini close to home. Jadi untuk jaraknya sendiri itu kan penerbangannya paling sekitar satu setengah jam sampai maksimal dua jam kalian bisa terbang. E, nanti kalau misalnya e, kalian kangen ke rumah atau orang tua mau visit kalian itu juga sangat dekat sekali gitu. Jadi alasan terakhir ya itu Malaysia itu sangat dekat dari rumah. Oke. Nah, sekarang aku akan uh, sebutkan kenapa sih harus milihnya tuh Monash University untuk di Malaysia gitu ya. Nah, untuk Monash University sendiri kita selalu konsisten di top 1%. Jadi kita di top 1% in the world. Uh, saat ini kita posisinya ini uh, ranking 35 untuk most international university in the world. 75 uh, versi Times Higher Education dan ini sebenarnya yang world, uh, QS World Ranking ini kita baru aja naik jadi memang baru diumumkan uh, beberapa uh, hari lalu jadi kita untuk per 2021 kita naik tiga uh, peringkat jadi ke 55 jadi sudah bukan 58 lagi gitu dan untuk graduate employability-nya sendiri uh, saat ini kita rankingnya di uh, ranking 66 jadi uh, dengan otomatis lulusan-lulusan kita juga banyak dicari. Dan untuk domestically, jadi yang di Malaysia sendiri, saat ini kita posisinya itu sudah outstanding, jadi sudah rated tier 6 by Ministry of Higher Education Malaysia. Nah, saat ini memang belum banyak uni-uni yang punya rated outstanding ini. gitu Saat ini memang hanya 8 dan Monash University salah satunya. Oke, okay. nah alasan kedua itu Monash University sendiri kan bagian dari uh, kampus Malaysia ini bagian dari uh, global kampusnya Monash University nih. Jadi kalau kalian lihat di sini kan uh, banyak nih cabangnya. Jadi ada kalau kampusnya sendiri di Australia itu ada empat kampus, lalu ada di uh, Kuala Lumpur yang kampus Malaysia, lalu kita punya tiga center kecil ada di Itali, di India dan China. Dan untuk Indonesia itu akan buka tahun depan, gitu. Jadi tahun depan kita akan buka untuk uh, master and PhD. Nah untuk alumni networknya sendiri saat ini kurang lebih ada sekitar uh, 350 ribu alumni network. Oke, okay, nah ini uh, kampusnya uh, untuk gambaran aja. Ini kalau yang di kampus Malaysia dan empat kampus yang di Australia. Oke. Okay. Nah, oke. Okay. Karena kita part of global campus, jadi kalian punya kesempatan nih untuk transfer. Jadi sesudah studi minimal satu tahun atau dua semester, kalian sudah bisa transfer ke kampus utama di Australia gitu. Jadi ini salah satu opsi yang bisa kalian pilih. Tapi kalau kalian transfer, otomatis akan mengikuti biaya kuliah di Australia nantinya. Jadi kalian stop di Malaysia, kalian pindah ke Australia akan mengikuti biaya kuliah Australia. Nah, yang kedua itu kita ada interkampus exchange program. Jadi kalian bisa exchange. Jadi kalian ke Australia satu semester, kampus Australia, lalu nanti balik lagi ke Malaysia. Nah, untuk exchange ini biayanya itu tetap kalian bayar ringgit Malaysia karena kalian masih terdaftar sebagai murid Monash University yang di Malaysia. Nah, kita juga ada interversity exchange program. Tadi kan ada uh, di gambar peta itu kan ada 100 plus. Jadi kita sebenarnya udah punya 100 plus partner berbagai universitas di dunia ini. Jadi kita ada 3 di 30 negara. Kalian bisa exchange maksimal 2 semester ke uh, universitas tersebut. gitu. Jadi ini beberapa opsi pilihan negaranya. Uh, untuk detailnya nanti bisa aku share uh, website-nya. Oke. Okay. Nah. Uh, gimana bayarannya? Bayarannya tetap dalam ringgit Malaysia karena kalian masih terdaftar murid Monash University Malaysia, jadi biayanya tetap uh, ringgit Malaysia, tapi kalian bisa studinya lebih jauh nih, misalnya mau ke Inggris atau ke Eropa, nah itu kalian uh, bisa uh, tetap hemat, tapi uh, memang biaya hidup akan mengikuti negara setempat, tapi Monash juga kita punya ada yang travel grant. Travel grant ini Uh, up to 8.000 uh, ringgit per semesternya. Ini untuk anak-anak yang uh, exchange uh, ke partner-partner kita. Oke, okay. jadi kalau di Monash sendiri, selain belajar, kita juga ada namanya club and society. Jadi nggak cuma belajar, belajar aja. Nah ini contoh-contoh uh, club yang society yang ada, memang kita nggak tulis semua, jadi totalnya saat ini kita punya 58 club, itu ada 21 club uh, sports, ada 15 untuk special interest, ada 8 untuk akademik, performing arts ada 8, dan cultural spiritual sendiri kita ada 6. Jadi 
untuk culture spiritual itu jadi uh, setiap uh, religion yang ada itu kita punya untuk uh, society-nya gitu. Jadi nggak hanya belajar, kalian juga ada kegiatan lainnya. Oke. Okay. Dan kalau di Mones tuh nggak selesai, oke okay, terima kasih udah kuliah di Mones, udah that's it, selesai gitu. Uh, kita lepas kamu, nggak juga. Jadi di Mones itu kita ada namanya Employment and Career Development Center ya. Jadi ini kita tiap tahun ada beberapa program nih, contohnya yang ini yang Career Fair, ini kita uh, biasa yearly ya, annual ini kita ada range untuk Career Fair, di mana kalau murid-murid yang uh, sudah mau lulus itu bisa cari uh, kerja atau internship kalau buat anak-anak yang masih uh, kuliah. Dan kita juga ada mentoring program, ini available untuk uh, student yang di tahun terakhir, di mana ada mentor program dari uh, al alumni kita yang uh, sudah experience untuk career advice. Oke, okay. nah yang sering jadi pertanyaan nih, oh jadi ijazahnya beda dong kalau Australia dan Malaysia? Enggak, jadi ijazahnya sendiri tetap ada satu dari Monash University, itu tidak akan ada tulisan Malaysia atau Australia gitu. Jadi yang kalian terima itu tetap identikal dengan Australia kampus even even kalau kalian juga uh, tetap kuliahnya sampai selesai di kampus Malaysia. Oke. Okay. Nah, ini uh, buat gambaran aja singkat. Jadi uh, kita programnya itu kita punya fakultasnya ini, tapi hari ini kita akan uh, spesial, uh, spesial dengar uh, untuk program dari sains. Oke. Okay. Ini kalau kalian nanti uh, mau tahu lebih uh, dalam tentang Monash University, kalian bisa cek uh, website-nya. Terus di gitu kita juga ada di Facebook, uh, lalu ada di Instagram dan di Twitter gitu. Nanti ini aku bisa share lagi sesudah uh, sesi. Oke, okay, um, sekian sih kalau presentasi aku. Nanti uh, sesudah ini uh, kita akan dengarkan uh, info session dari Dr. Lee. Dr. Lee, you can start. Okay, uh, thank you, Christine. So, um, uh, let me share my screen first. I'm sorry, uh, Dr. Lee, I think your screen is freezing.
Okay. You're... Okay. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. My connection is not so stable. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 So uh, I think um, yeah. So I think everyone is here, right? Um, so in Monash University, Malaysia, we are actually located in the city of Sunway Township, very convenient city. Uh, so students can um, stay there and there's a uh, shopping complex within walking distance. In Monash University as well, we do have 850 staff from more than 30 countries. And we have as well 8,000 plus students from more than 70 countries. So we can see that it is a diverse university uh, with uh, multiracial um, students and uh, staff. So it can mingle around that. And the academic students to academic ratio in Monash University is 23 to 1. And most of our academic staff are are uh, um, graduated with a PhD degree, 83% of them, and 36% of our academic staff in the whole school are the expatriate. So um, currently, as of today, there are around 15,000 of our Monash Malaysia graduate. So let me show you a little bit of tour virtual tour to our university. All right. So I hope everybody can see from here. So let's go to the virtual tour to Monash University. So this will be the entrance. And when you go inside, what you can see is, so this is the main entrance. So we have BRT uh, for the students to uh, transport from one place to the other place. This is surrounding of Monash University, Malaysia. So the yellow building here is actually all the, our campus. Okay, so let's go inside. So this will be our foyer. So when you go inside the foyer, you can see that this is the lobby. All right. And this is actually our library, which is beside the uh, foyer. A nicely built campus. All right. Okay, so I'll bring you through cafeteria. This is our newly built cafeteria uh, for students and staff uh, to uh, by uh, their um, food. Okay. And this is the, what we call as the learning suite in uh, Monash is a newly built as well to cater for active learning. So you may find that in the lecture hall itself, there's a round table that students actually sit together to do their discussion. And even in our lecture itself, we do uh, encourage this kind of active learning lecture. So this is what um, I would like to show you that we are now into active learning. So everybody are going to sit around, the students are going to sit around in the table and the lecturers are going to conduct in a very interactive way. This, this is also a newly built um, facilities.
okay? And this is the place whereby students can sit around uh, to um, discuss the thing. Okay. And the uh, planetary theater, lecture hall. Okay. So another auditorium as well, which can cater around 200 plus students. And we do have other uh, facilities. Right, so do you have this indoor climbing area, the basketball court, the futsal court, right, so on and so forth. Okay, so let me go through the scope signs, or before that, I just like to share with you the a very nice place whereby students can sit around. So the hive, the ideal link place. Okay. So I think there's more or less the, um, what we have in the uh, Monash University in Malaysia. So now let's move on to the School of Science. So in School of Science in Food Science and Technology course, I would like to share with you the labs that we have. All right. So we do have here ice cream uh, processing plant, pilot plant to produce ice cream. Our freeze dryer, our drying oven. So actually there's a door here that you can go through. It's our pilot uh, processing plant. Okay. So this is just part of the facilities for food science and technology. We do have one for kitchen, uh, but it's not in the virtual tour, right? Okay. Now, um, I think I will continue my presentation. All right, so um, I think Christine has mentioned before that we do have a few schools in Monash University, Malaysia, and me and Cindy are in the School of Science. So in School of Science, we have 33 academic staff, and 100% of these staff are graduated with PhD qualification. Um, Priorities and soft sciences to provide quality and teaching to our students, 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 and not to mention, not to mention the academic staff, staff also very active in performing cutting edge research as well. So I think right now scope science is around trend, uh, established in around 1998, so it's around 20 years.
Sepertinya Dr. Lee sedang ada masalah koneksi lagi. Kita tunggu sebentar. Oke, okay. um, sorry. It's okay, Dr. Lee. It's okay. I'm back here. All right. So, um, so as what I've mentioned, we have three years study for these three courses. And if we extend to another year, that will be the Bachelor's of Science Honor Degree. So I'd like to share with you some video for you to watch uh, related to the School of Science. What do you aspire to be? Of all possible paths, why science? It's about purpose. The silent endurance. Driven by endless curiosity. Constant inspiration. its versatility, and the experience. But what if things do not go your way? Uncertainty, striving through sleepless nights, oh quest, and frustrations in search of losers, even unexpected drawbacks. Is it worth it? But in science, life changing ideas. To inspire evolution. Science at Monash University, Malaysia, bringing about transformation. All right, so that is all about the School of Science. Bachelors of Science and Technology. So what, uh, for you to better get a better understanding what it is for Bachelors of Science and Technology. So I think most of you have came across these few products before. The salted egg fish, fish skin. Uh, popcorn chicken that you can find in the shelf of the shopping complex, um, the chocolate uh, products, dairy chocolate incorporated with Oreo. So as a food scientist, what we are trying to do is we are trying to convert the raw material, uh, undervalued raw materials into value added product with, um, which is safe for human consumption, not only safe, but Nutrition and nutrients and uh, provide new uh, valuable nutrients to the consumer as well. 
So as you can see from here that we are trying to convert the fish skin, which usually thrown away, into uh, snacks products that people can consume. Uh, we do as we do produce as well as a food scientist popcorn chicken that is pretty much convenient for you to cook at uh, your home, right? Without um, having for you to go uh, out. Sepertinya Dr. Lee kembali menjadi ada sedikit trouble dengan kontrak koneksinya. Kita coba sebentar lagi. Right. So, so these are the knowledge that we need to have. We need to know the composition and nature of the food, uh, the causes of spoilage, 
and how we can use the processing and preservation method to uh, produce or to turn the raw materials into the final value added product. So as a food scientist, we try to improve the qualities of the uh, food by various means, basically to extend the shelf life of the food, as you can see from here, that the fresh can fresh sardine uh, has a shorter shelf life if you compare it with a canned sardine. So we try to make canned products from the raw material. We also would like to minimize the uh, food waste are uh, in uh, this um, community. So as you can see that we have the snacks, uh, fish skin snacks. So we're trying to use various processing techniques to produce the snacks, which is delicious, tasty, and nutritious to the consumer. And not only that, as a food scientist, we also try to improve nutrition values of the food like um, vitamin water that you can find in the market. So it is incorporated with vitamins. And we do also provide convenience, uh, the ease of products usage, like um, dumpling, frozen dumpling that you can find in the market. So there's no need for you to actually go and make the dumpling by yourself, but you just, what you can do is you just purchase dumpling from the market and it just uh, fry, pan fried, or you steam it. So this is what the, actually the food side is did. So we're trying to improve the quality of the food, right, by increasing the attractiveness, the safety, nutritional uh, composition, uh, taste and textures of the food, as well as to maintain the wholesomeness of the food product. So what are the career opportunities? If you graduate with food science and technology, you can work in various national and multinational company like uh, Nestle, Unilever, um, Samdabi, FNN, and Fonterra. And I think in Indonesia, very famous is will be your Indomie. You have uh, the Indo food. So we can work in a section like food product development to design or come up with formulation, new formulations of the product, or to improve formulations of existing product. You can also work in production line to ensure that the manufacturing process is smooth, or quality assurance department, Q and A, uh, QA and QC department. Sales and marketing, of course, with the knowledge that you have in food science and technology, you are better off equipped with information for you to promote food products to the consumer or food ingredients to your potential uh, consumer. You can work in sensory analysis as well, because uh, in food science and technology, uh, certain areas that we need human beings to conduct sensory evaluation on the product before it can be sold to the market. So we need such kind of person in certain factory as well. In, apart from that, you can also work in food law and regulation uh, area or management area. So there are a few career opportunities for food science and technology. So this is only a few of them. So, so you may want to know uh, what kind of work setting that you are expected to work if you graduated with food science and technology? You can work in research institute to conduct research, teaching institute, uh, government or non-government organization, or uh, you can also become an uh, entrepreneur yourself uh, to have your own business, or in food service organization uh, to develop new formulation uh, for or improve formulations to the existing product in uh, the company, or as far well as uh, to conduct analysis, food analysis in testing laboratory. So I think uh, there are a few questions that people keep asking. What's the difference between the food technologies, nutritionists, and dietitian? 
So just to share with you here, as a dietitian, you are going expected to work in clinical or mechanical setting um, together with healthcare professional like doctors to provide advice to those with chronic condition. So you work in, um, for example, in hospital with doctors to provide advice to them how to design a better diet or healthy diet to um, patients with chronic condition. So the study of dietetics actually integrate uh, professional training and skill in the area of clinical nutrition. Meanwhile, for nutritionists, nutritionists work in a more public setting and they focus more on On healthy individuals, say so chronic disease, but for nutritionists, they work with um, patients, um, a healthy individuals, right? So it's more general. So basically, for nutrition, we study, um, understand how the body ingests, digests, absorb, transport, utilize, and excrete food substances. Okay. So what about food science and technology? Food science and technology, we try to understand the fate of the agriculture raw materials. So you have your raw materials. We are trying to see how we can convert these raw materials into something that is nutritious, uh, wholesome, and safe for human consumption. So by that means that we need to couple with technology. So we'll learn processing, uh, various types of processing, food processing, food preservation, packaging, distributions of the food to ensure that they are safe, they can be um, sell uh, in, on the shelf of the um, hypermarket. So this study focus area for food science and technology. You will learn uh, chemistry of the food, microbiology, food microbiology, sensory science, how to develop a product, product development, functional food, how certain um, these are ingredients present in the food will affect your health, nutrition, all right? So we have food nutrition as well, um, food processing and packaging and food safety. So as you can see that for food science and technology is more general, right? Unlike the dietitians or the uh, nutritionists, the course as a nutritionist. So I just want to share with you something to, uh, to, for you to know about the um, food science and technology. Have you ever stopped and wondered about the food you are eating? Does the way how food spoils intrigue you? Or have you ever thought how food can have fantastic flavors yet be so healthy? In this episode of The Science of Food, we'll discuss the study of what we eat. Science is the study of the physical, biological, and chemical makeup of food and the concepts underlying food processing. The physical components may include the sensory attributes of food, such as sight, smell, and texture. The biological aspects of food include the microbiology of it. While the chemical makeup of food comprises of its molecular structure and reactions, food technology is the application of food science to the selection, processing, preservation, packaging, distribution, and use of safe food. With their help, sustainable food is readily available and is of good quality when it reaches you. But what specifically do they do? One display of their expertise is through helping farmers preserve their apple fruits by coating them with edible wax. Without an extra layer of protection, apples might be attacked by insects, 
microorganisms or just simply lose its moisture and nutrients, food technologists help extend the shelf life of food products through processing them appropriately. Apples generally last for up to six weeks. But when waxed, apples can now last for five to eight months. Now that's just a sample of what food scientists do. They also formulate new products in the market you usually visit. They study and extract flavor compounds from different sources. Does that mean I can make a peanut butter and jelly flavored juice? Technically, yes. But why would you? With the help of food scientists, the world can have safe, stable, nutritious and yummy foods readily available. Just keep in mind the expiry date. All right, so that is uh, to uh, give you the better overview of what is uh, food science and technology. So in our Monash University, our FSD course, Food Science and Technology, is a three-year full-time study. If you extend it to another year, that will be Bachelor's of Science of Honors. So we have three intake, February, July, and October. And our Monash University Food Science and Technology course is the first private university to be accredited by International Union of Food Science and Technology, which means that the unit that we offer in FSD is uh, at the same par as the one that uh, we have uh, in uh, overseas. So these are the recommended uh, program of study uh, if you enroll for food science and technology. So part A is a general science unit. So for part B and part C, you have food science and food technology unit. So food chemistry, fundamentals of food science and food and sensory science. We do have nutrition as well, functional food, uh, food microbiology, uh, food pr bioprocess technology, pres preservation, processing, product development, whereby students will do from scratch how to develop product, uh, food safety and quality, as well as food science internships. So we do provide, allow students to go uh, for two months internship uh, to the, with the industry, food industry. So just to share with you, uh, this is the field trips that we um, created for the undergraduate students. So they visited Yakult in Malaysia and our students also, they are also sent to join competition as well in Malaysia. So this is the product that they actually developed from scratch, right? So um, a few companies that you can do your internship uh, with in food science and technology. We do have Nestle, we have uh, GAB, MacFood, Likamki, um, Yohab Singh, Shishi King, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, this is all the food company, big food company in Malaysia. In Indonesia, you can have uh, Indu food, right? So, um, so this is the few uh, food companies whereby our current alumni actually work in. They work in a carry uh, ingredient, make food, Fonterra, which deal with uh, milk powder. Jovadon is a flavoring company. Um, uh, this uh, GAB is an alcoholic um, beverages company. You have Likamki and Hobbit. Right, and if you can see, this is the um, feedback from our student. So she is actually um, employed by Nestle currently, right? Our ratio, so she's employed by Nestle right now. Okay, so that's all for my presentation. So before we end, just to give you a little bit of quiz, um, mix and match. So for the first one, so what you can do right now for the student, you can answer the question from the chat room that we have in the Zoom chat room. So food science and technology, food science and technology to the productions of safe and nutritious food. So what is that cause? 
So you try to mix and match. So you can post your comments in the chat room. Yes, you are right, Salim. So it's food science and technology. Okay, so we move on to the second one. Integration of professional training and skills in the area of clinical nutrition. So what is this? Yes, correct. So it's a dietitian, um, um, right? It's a uh, dietetic course. Um, study of nutrients and the uptake interactions in relation to health and disease. So the last one will be the nutrition, correct. Right. Okay, so we move on to the second one. So I think you now you know roughly what uh, is the difference between food, food technologies or food scientists with nutritionists or the data ethics. Okay, so the second quiz, all of the following undergraduate courses offer at School of Science, Monash University Malaysia, except which one is not offered in Monash University Malaysia, School of Science, A, B, C, or D. Yeah, all right, you're right. So it's B, right? So all of these, we do have food science and technology, um, bachelors of science, bachelors of medical bio science, but not bachelors of mathematics. Okay, the last one. State the accreditation body that accredited bachelors of food science and technology course. So it's a long word. So why is that? So the accreditation body is what? From International Union of Food Science and Technology, right? So it's an IU force. Okay. So um, thank you, that's all for my presentation. So we look forward to welcome you at School of Science, Monash University. Christine, I'll pass it over to you. Okay, uh, now it's uh, Q&A. If any of you have questions, you can put on the chat. Questions regarding the food and science. Any question? Teman-teman, ada pertanyaan untuk Dr. Lee tentang food science and technology? Yep. Mungkin ada, oh, oke. Okay. Does food science and technology learn about gastronomy? We have um, human nutrition, 
um, and also functional food um, in our course. So in human nutrition, we do learn how the macro and macronutrient um, actually being utilized or absorbed in the body. So a little bit about that in human nutrition. But the whole unit for gas gastronomy uh, is not in the uh, Bachelor's of Food Science and Technology from Monash University. But we do learn a little bit in human nutrition. Yep. Any other questions? Pertanyaan lagi, Dr. Lee. Is oh, is there any scholarship? Uh, what do we need to apply? Okay, uh, for this I will answer uh, after this, after the session I will uh, show you the screen. I mean, uh, for the information for scholarship. Is there any uh, questions for uh, Dr. Lee first? Related to food and science. Yeah, any question from the floor? They want to know more about food science and technology. So Dr. Lee, I have a question. Yeah. So we're gonna 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 study the 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 content, con, con, uh, the food content, the content of the food. So the content of food. yeah. Yeah, and also the the packaging, right? Yeah, also correct. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry? So you want to study the content? The, count, the content of the food and the packaging also. Oh, I see. So we do have uh, the unit, uh, yep. the general first year unit. Uh, mm -hmm. fundamental of science and technology. So students will learn all different groups of the food. So for example, we do have uh, confectionery, uh, we do have fats and oils, um, baked products. So everything they will learn, every compositions for each of the food group. All right. And for our packaging, we do have as well in uh, food packaging. Okay. Preservation. Yeah. Did I answer your question? Yep, definitely. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Thank you. Ada yang mau bertanya lagi ke Dr. Lee tentang sosial dan teknologi? What is the best or most interesting part if we study food science and technology? Okay, stood um, com questions from Evi. So I think for food science and technology, I would say that um, one of the interesting part in our course is that we uh, there's one course called food product development. So it's a kind of project based course whereby students will learn how to convert the raw material into final product, edible products that is safe for consumption. So I think, um, so the students will work in groups, all right? So they will develop great formulation, think about idea how to develop the product, um, develop formulation, 
and create their own packaging as well. So I think we do have one of the um, few groups of students, uh, one group of students. Uh, I'm not sure whether I can share the video with you all that you would like to see the product from the students. So they actually use the waste product um, from this uh, chestnut, all right? They turn it into noodle and use that noodle to make nasi lemak. So this is what, uh, what, what um, how, um, this is the interesting part of the food science and technology, one of the unit. And the other one is um, internship. I think this is a very um, good opportunity for the students to work in the industry before they graduate. So they will learn something from, um, um, from, from this um, working environment. Okay, so um, maybe I'll share with you the video of the students' work. Um, let me see. Huh? So this is the, the um, products that the student actually made um, from this uh, chestnut, the undervalued, underutilized chestnut. So even the packaging itself, you can see, is created by the student. Okay, there's questions from Mona. Yeah. Uh, I want to. I want us. How is the best way to contact the Monash professor in terms of discussing idea of asking for recommendation for master, especially in science field? Okay. Uh, for um, master uh, for school of science, the master itself is uh, research based. So, uh, yes, you should have the topic first and send the um proposal to school of science uh, i can give you the contact of the research manager for school of science uh, and give you the detail of the what uh, what are the research that we currently have uh, i mean i can give you the link later Yeah, maybe uh, Evie, I can add on on this uh, graduate program in School of Science. So um, when you, when students can view through the profile of each of the um, lecturer or academic staff in School of Science Monash. So they can see what are the areas of interest that they want to study. So each of the academic staff, they have their um, expertise in which area. So if the students would like to work, for example, in the field of 
um, maybe fats and oils so they can look for the lecturers that work in field at uh, fats and oils and they can um, email, send an emails to the um, professor or the lecturer. So from there that um, they will start to communicate how to develop the proposal and how to get the student enrolled in the process. Yep. So, so every when you check with the research manager, so they will provide the list of the academic staff to you. So students can um, look through each of the profile and see which area that really they interested to work uh, in. Is there any other questions? I think there's one. For internship, does Monash help us to find company or we should find it by ourselves? So um, for internship, um, usually, usually we encourage students to look for their own um, company that they would like to work with. So they will hand in their CV to the company that, would, that um, they would like to work with. And yeah, so it will so the students will um, contact the company. So because we would like to develop the students not only in terms of academics um, field but also in their soft skill as well to communicate with the potential employer. So we do uh, at first um, students will contact the company by their own by themselves. And we do provide support as well in, in between if they have any difficulties. Yep, any more question that you would like to ask? Any questions? Any question for Dr. Lee? If not, I think um, I think we can like um, summarize uh, Dr. Lee for the the your session. Uh, if you have uh, more questions other than uh, faculty of science. Christine is still be here, so you still can have a chat and give uh, or ask question. But if you have uh, something to add, Dr. Lee, please, uh, before we have a group of picture. Yep, any more questions that you would like to clarify from the floor? Student. Okay, if uh, no more questions, then we can uh, proceed with the uh if you want to do like photo session or something? Uh, yes. Uh, can you all uh, switch on your video, please? Yeah, okay. Just to take pictures. Everyone. Let us see your face. Awesome. Please. OK. 
Oke. Okay. Yep. Anyone else? Please switch on your video. Ada lagi yang mau ikutan foto bareng? Ayo kita foto bareng. Masih dahanan. Dan Susian, Grace, Pak Agus Salim, Mbak Ratna. Oke. Okay. Ini yang dari Zoom dari Rep. I'm really, I'm really so sorry. I'm not too willing. Uh, good. <laughs> so I cannot open up my video. Okay. Okay, Pak. It's, It's okay, okay, Pak. Thank, thank you. Thank you. you. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe some other day. Yeah. <laughs> Join lagi ya, Pak ya. Okay. Let's do. You can do pose like this or like this. Oke, okay. Dito, on your count. Oke, okay. nomor tiga ya, hitung. Yeah. Satu, dua, tiga. Sebentar. One more time. Sebentar, saya save dulu. Oke, okay. satu lagi, sekali lagi. Ya, yeah. satu kali lagi. Sudah tak? Sudah. Oke, okay. thank you so much Dr. Lee for your yeah, time. Thanks, We yeah, thanks really everyone for the Thank you very much everyone yes, and thank, you, thank so you very much. much. Thank you Bye so much. Oke. Okay. Um, kalau masih ada pertanyaan di luar Faculty of Science, Christine masih boleh ya ada di sini untuk sekitar 10 menit lagi ya. Uh, Christine, your unmute, unmute please. Oh ya, oke. Oke, iya. Oke, so um, 10 menit untuk question uh, sesi dari Christine. Jadi silakan Kristen. Tadi ada yang nanya scholarship kan ya? Kalau nggak salah. Kristen, excuse me. Scholarship. Uh, kalau boleh tahu yang tanya tadi untuk S1, S2 scholarshipnya? Tadi di chat ya. S1, Mbak Kristen. Satu ya, oke. Okay. Jadi uh, ini untuk uh, scholarshipnya sendiri, kita ada beberapa. Yang pertama ini Higher Achiever Award. Ini uh, applicable untuk program-program ini. Jadi dari SMA kelas 3, IB Diploma, uh, level MAFI, nah ini uh, macam-macam ya. Kalau pakai uh, kurikulum SMA kelas 3 nih, itu kita minta nilai minimum 90. Jadi rata-rata semester 1 dan semester 2 kelas 12 kamu, harus minimum 90 untuk, uh, sorry, higher achiever award itu minimum 95, itu dapatnya 5.000 per semester. Jadi up to 10.000 untuk per year-nya. Lalu kita ada juga yang bursary for Indonesian student, ini 90 nilai rata-rata semester 1, semester 2, kelas 12-nya. Itu kita 2.500 per semester ini, uh, atau totalnya 5.000 untuk per year. Gitu. Yang ini yang berlaku untuk uh, semua faculty ya, gitu. Jadi uh, dua ini sih, kalau nggak dapat di awal, kita juga ada sih Higher Achiever Award untuk Continuing Student. Nah itu sesudah kamu kuliah di sana, jadi sudah kuliah satu, uh, dua semester di uh, Monash University. Nanti kita lihat kalau nilainya memang oke, okay, nanti semester tiga onwards baru dapat. Itu harus minta minimum uh, 80 selama uh, dua semester di uh, Monash University. Gitu. Izin dong Mbak bertanya secara live. Ya. Izin bertanya Mbak, saya Agus Salim Mbak dari Besar ya? Sulawesi Selatan. Oke. Okay. Uh, saya saya sudah mohon maaf sebelumnya bukan ya. ini. Saya sudah menyelesaikan pendidikan magister dan doktor di luar. 
Ya. Saya mencoba untuk mencari apakah di ini Monas University Malaysia atau Monas University Australia? Uh, Malaysia. Malaysia, oke, okay, I know. Ya. Uh, apakah di Monas University Malaysia itu mem- memiliki program fellowship atau postdoctoral program untuk untuk nursing atau untuk uh, hal apa ya? Untuk nursing aja deh. Uh, ada nggak? Nursing saat ini memang hanya ada di kampusnya di Australia. Ya. Jadi kita kan ada fakulti medicine, health science, and nursing. Nah, kalau nursing itu di Australia. Kalau di uh, Malaysia saat ini memang kita uh, belum ada untuk yang nursing. Jadi uh, medicine, health sciences aja gitu adanya. Oh, oke okay, oke. Okay. Thank you ya informasinya. Ya, Makasih. Ya. ya. S2, oke, oh, okay. ini Ricky tadi ya, aku coba share lagi. Oke, okay. uh, untuk yang S2 ini kita adanya ini, jadi ada Graduate Research Pathway Scholarship, ada Graduate Research Merit Scholarship. Nah, ini nanti balik tergantung, uh, karena kan S2 kita yang untuk School of Science itu kan research program gitu. Nanti kita harus lihat nih, kamu punya S1, itu konten uh, research-nya cukup nggak untuk direct masuk ke research program. Kalau nggak, itu memang harus melalui program namanya Research Pathway dulu. Itu either postgraduate diploma atau honors year, jadi bachelor honors. Nanti baru bisa masuk ke Uh, either master or PhD. Nah ini untuk scholarshipnya yang tersedia ini. Jadi kalau graduate research pathway scholarship itu uh, 100% atau partial tuition fee waiver. Tapi kalau untuk researchnya sendiri itu 100% plus living allowance. Per, uh, living allowance-nya per month nanti diberikan gitu. Nah ini uh, tergantung dari research yang kamu mau ambil. Jadi sebenarnya untuk researchnya sendiri kita ada research priority. Nah research priority-nya itu nanti um, bisa aku kasih uh, ininya apa uh, linknya gitu untuk yang School of Science. Oke, aku stop dulu. Oke, okay. uh, kira-kira ada pertanyaan lagi yang untuk General Monash University-nya? Untuk engineering, oke. Okay. Kalau untuk engineering, untuk S2, saat ini kita ada dua program. Yang pertama itu program uh, by research. Itu uh, cukup banyak ya cakupannya. Yang untuk yang coursework, program non-research itu kita ada Master Advanced Engineering, uh, itu untuk Energy and Sustainability. gitu. Jadi, cuma satu itu aja. Kalau yang uh, Master by Research itu memang pilihannya banyak. Nanti uh, bisa di-sharing juga sih. Uh, apa um, aku akan berikan itu ke dengan nanti uh, dengan Evi atau Dito nanti bisa di sharing ke kamu untuk uh, ada researchnya apa aja untuk yang School of Engineering. Oke, okay, Selin sudah leave. Kira-kira ada pertanyaan lagi? Sorry, kalau nggak ada pertanyaan lagi mungkin uh, bisa sampai sini sesinya. Nanti uh, untuk informasi yang tadi uh, uh, akan aku kasihnya ke Dito atau Evi. Nanti bisa di sharing lagi ke uh, kalian untuk yang apa uh, researchnya apa saja yang tersedia. Tuh. Oke, okay. mungkin dari Evi atau Dito bisa di closing. Oh, ini ada lagi Ricky. Oke. Okay. 
ada data Amerika, kayak ikan Amerika. Asal ikan Amerika kan berarti Oke, pendaftaran setahun ada berapa kali untuk master itu kalau uh, yang coursework itu ada di Februari, ada juga di uh, Juli, cuman memang ada beberapa program yang hanya ada di Februari, tapi kalau master by research itu memang uh, throughout the year, jadi bisa anytime gitu. Jadi kalau uh, kamu tertarik untuk yang tadi yang uh, master by research itu kamu harus uh, cek dulu kamu eligible atau tidak bisa dikontak nanti ke resource managernya gitu. Jadi dikasih proposalnya terus nanti yang akademik kamu uh, diserahkan gitu nanti baru um, apa diproses lebih lanjut cari untuk supervisor dan lain-lainnya. Itu bisa anytime throughout the year gitu. Tapi kalau untuk yang coursework itu memang ada setahun dua kali, biasanya Februari dan Juli gitu untuk masuknya. Nah untuk deadline pendaftarannya biasanya itu paling enggak uh, dua bulan sebelum. Jadi kalau untuk Februari biasanya di akhir Desember, kalau untuk Juli biasanya sekitaran bulan uh, Mei gitu. Tergantung dari program kamu nih. Tadi kan kamu juga nanyanya ada beberapa, ada yang science dan juga uh, engineering gitu. Oke, okay, kalau engineering yang tadi, engineering kalau Master of Advanced Engineering itu ada di Februari dan uh, Juli untuk masuknya, gitu. Kecuali yang research ya, kalau mas, uh, Master Engineering by Research itu anytime kamu bisa daftarnya. Oke, ada lagi pertanyaan buat Christine. Jadi kalau nanti untuk ada yang tertarik untuk apply, bisa kontak kami. Nanti eh, apa kita akan share informasi detail kami untuk bisa kami, kalian kontak. Um, untuk Mas Riki nanti bisa tanya-tanya eh, kami juga, Mbak. Eh, Mas. Gitu. Nanti kita share ya Mas Riki untuk share set pendaftarannya. Ada pertanyaan lagi untuk Christine? Oke, okay. sepertinya uh, sudah tidak ada pertanyaan lagi, uh, Christine. So again, thank you so much for your time. Okay. Uh, terima kasih juga untuk yang sudah hadir di sini untuk mengikuti acara kami. Uh, for your info, kami juga akan ada beberapa event di depan nanti, jadi... Um, boleh join juga dengan event-event kami berikutnya dengan topik yang berbeda. Uh, untuk hari ini, thank you so much uh, for Mones University Malaysia. Uh, Dr. Lee, Christine, Chiran, thank you so much. Thank you for the attendees. Stay safe and stay healthy. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.